Hi, Kim. welcome to video three in our matter series. Today I'm starting on page three with changes in matter. So the goal of today's lesson is to get you to understand the difference between physical and chemical changes. So a physical change is a change that does not produce a new substance, meaning there's no chemical reaction. So some examples of that are phase changes, like changing from solid to liquid to gas, changes of form, like dissolving sugar in water, crushing an aluminum can, or forming a mixture, like forming trail mix or making cake batter. In this class, we're going to emphasize phase changes. There are changes in the state of matter of a substance. There are always physical changes because the substance's chemical identity remains the same. For example, water is still H2O, whether it's ice, liquid, or steam. Phase changes can be represented on a heating curve like the one below. The heating curve below is for water, so label the phase changes in the direction of the arrows as endo or exothermic. Assume standard pressure of one atmosphere. Okay, so you can see our little heating curve, and it looks like a stair step. Okay, we've got solid at the bottom, liquid in the middle, and gas at the top. So as you climb the stair step, this is called endothermic, where energy is being absorbed for this to happen. As you go down the ladder, this is called exothermic. And a good analogy that I always use to remember this is if you're going into a building, you go up the stairs. If you're exiting a building, you go down the stairs. Okay, and it's the same. Endothermic is when heat is being absorbed or entering. Exothermic is when heat is being released or exiting. Okay, let's look more closely at phase changes. So we've got melting, freezing, boiling, condensing, sublimation, and deposition. Those two may be new to you. Uh, melting. The states of matter involved are going from a solid to a liquid, and this is heat being absorbed, and we call this endothermic. Take a minute and pause the video. I want to see if you can tell me the states of matter involved in freezing, boiling, and condensing. Okay, welcome back. For freezing, we go from a solid to a liquid. For boiling, liquid to a gas. And condensing is gas back to a liquid. Sublimation and deposition are probably new to you. Sublimation is when something goes from a solid straight to a gas. It doesn't pass through the liquid phase. Deposition is just the opposite, going from a gas to a solid. So what's really important is you know when heat is being absorbed and when it's being released. When heat is being absorbed, think of it as needing to get warmer. If you put um, it on a stove, for example, Okay, so in things like boiling, heat would be absorbed, and, and in things like sublimation, heat would be absorbed. When heat is absorbed, we call this endothermic, because it's entering. Just the opposite, when heat is released, like in freezing, condensing, and deposition, it's exothermic, because heat is exiting for this to occur. Okay, go ahead and turn the page. I am now on page four. Okay, sublimation and deposition. Okay, sublimation is when you go from solid to gas phase without passing through the liquid phase. Some examples of this are dry ice, which is actually carbon dioxide, really cold carbon dioxide. It's not really cold or special water, it's CO2. Um, solid air fresheners, mothballs, shrinking ice cubes, those are forms of sublimation. Deposition is just the opposite. It's going from a gas to a solid phase without passing through the liquid phase. And the best example of this is frost forming on a windshield. Water vapor in the air is crystallizing on cold glass, so it's never going through a liquid phase. It's going straight from a gas to a solid. I want to show you an example of what dry ice looks like, so take a minute to watch the video. Anyway, you'll notice that here this piece of dry ice does end up uh, sliding around fairly easy. Once it has that smooth bottom, it ends up uh, that this kind of acts like a uh, puck on an air hockey table. 
the gas that's coming off the bottom as it sublimes, as it goes straight from solid to gas phase, kind of acts as an air cushion then and allows it to just kind of slide around. This is fairly uh, low friction here, uh, a nearly friction-free surface, uh, although there is certainly still air resistance. And that's something we'll talk a lot about later in the year when we do chemistry. Uh, now, we've already mentioned that the dry ice itself is white. What about the, uh, the or the solid dry ice is right? What about the, the gas phase of carbon dioxide? Because that's all dry ice is, the solid car carbon dioxide. What about the gas phase? What's it look like? Uh huh. Check. What you're actually seeing is water vapor. So, carbon dioxide is actually clear. Everyone exhale real quick. Can you see your breath? No, of course not. What are you exhaling? Partly carbon dioxide. Something most people don't know, the majority of what you exhale is actually nitrogen gas. Air, made up of 70 to 80% nitrogen, so the majority of what you inhale is nitrogen, the majority of what you exhale is nitrogen. The reason we don't talk about it is because it's not important to your body. It's kind of just like it goes in and goes back out. It doesn't do anything. What we care about is the oxygen that goes in. That's what you're trying to take in. Certainly you take in some other stuff too. But the oxygen that you take in then is used by your body and your body gives off the waste gas of carbon dioxide. So we talk about the carbon dioxide that leaves. But carbon dioxide is like all the other pieces of your breath here. Clear. Okay, moving on to chemical changes. Chemical change is a change that does produce a new substance. It's also called a chemical reaction. So some examples of that would be milk souring um, and the Statue of Liberty, which something kids don't usually know is it was made of copper originally. And copper is the stuff that Penny is made up of. It's a orange brown metal. Well, what happened is that the Statue of Liberty has been exposed to carbon dioxide in water, the elements, so to speak, and a new substance, copper carbonate, has formed a layer over our pretty orange brown Statue of Liberty. So most people are used to seeing the Statue of Liberty being this green color. It's because a chemical reaction happened and copper carbonate is actually covering her. One good rule of thumb that can be useful in distinguishing physical from chemical changes is to ask yourself, can the change be reversed? If yes, it's probably a physical change. If no, it's probably chemical. Okay, so for example, milk goes sour. Can the change be reversed? No, you cannot get the milk to taste good again, so it's a chemical change. Note that a new substance, being lactic acid, has been produced. This acid is formed when bacteria break down the lactose in the milk. Another example, an ice cube melts. Can the change be reversed? Yes, you just put the water back in the freezer. Note that no new substance is produced. Remember, phase changes, changes between states and matter, solid, liquid, and gas are physical changes. Okay, something to note is this rule is not perfect. It is just meant as a guide. For example, consider the change that takes place when a piece of paper is cut into pieces. Can you get the whole sheet of paper back again? No, you can't, but what kind of change is this? This is physical. So you have to consider each case carefully. Don't just apply the rule without thinking. And the reason this is physical is it's still paper. No new substance was formed. Besides the general indicator of a chemical reaction, new substances are formed. Other specific signs of a chemical reaction are, there's five signs of a chemical reaction that we're going to talk about a lot. One is a gas being produced. Two, a light is produced. Three, a solid precipitate is formed from two liquids. Please highlight this word precipitate. It drives me crazy when kids don't know what this is. Precipitate. Temperature change, meaning temperature goes up or it goes down, and then a permanent color change. So back to this idea of a precipitate. If you look at my pictures below, they're actually mixing two clear liquids together to form this stuff. In the first one, you can kind of see um, a white powdery substance form. In this picture, you see a yellow substance form, but realize two clear liquids were combined to form that stuff. And I've got the chemical reaction of one of them written here. Lead nitrate and sodium iodide being combined, they're both liquids. What's formed is lead iodide, which is a solid, 
and then sodium nitrate, which is a liquid. So this solid that's formed, this is your precipitate. So exothermic and endothermic can happen in chemical changes also. Exothermic reactions are those in which heat flows from the system of interest to the surroundings. For example, an exothermic chemical reaction is burning a log in a fireplace. So diagram this example to show which way heat energy flows for an exothermic process. Okay, so in exothermic, heat is flowing from the system to the surroundings. So draw your arrow like this and please write heat above it. Okay, this is why we light fires in the first place because we are surroundings. I'm draw a little stick figure here. Okay, we have campfires and whatnot because we like to absorb the heat from the system, being the fire, so that we can feel warm. And we, okay, endothermic reactions are those in which heat flows from the surroundings to the system of interest. For example, an endothermic chemical reaction using a chemical cold pack or ice for, for an injury. Diagram this example to show which way heat energy flows for an endothermic process. Okay, so I want you to draw this time heat going from the surrounding being the injury to the system, the cold pack, and write heat above it, please. Why does an ice pack melt when you put it on your body? It's because the ice pack is absorbing the heat from your body, being endothermic. Okay, so it's literally stealing the heat from your body. That's why your body feels cold. This is the end of today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to rewind and rewatch certain parts if you need it. I hope you have a good day.